Good morning. <clears throat> it has been a while. <laughs> it has been a crazy two plus weeks. I mean, insanity. On this past Thursday, I base I was supposed to go to my mini group on Thursday, but basically I couldn't even get off the couch. <laughs> so um, we're back. We're back. In fact, John was so funny. He said, get on so you can remember what you're doing. And then all of a sudden he's having a stroke in the other room because he'd forgotten what to do. It's been so long, but we're here. We're here. Taping was really good this round. I will go through some of the people, if not all the people today. I haven't decided yet. I don't want to shortchange anyone. So I haven't decided whether this is part A and maybe Wednesday's part B. I just really haven't decided that yet. So I missed you guys too. Anyways, back to this. This is really interesting because a couple of, our, I grabbed this off Facebook and I'm embarrassed to say who I grabbed it from. It was somebody I know too, so shame on me. But a theme, every time we tape, there's a theme that kind of runs through it. And one of the things that kind of ran through it this round was that when everything is out of control in, in your life, in the world or whatever, you pick something up with your hands and you concentrate on it and you do it, it, it centers you, it takes you there. And it's interesting because I had not really heard, heard that articulated before, but it's the truth and it's probably why I have been so into handwork. I can control it. Though there was one guest, I don't know, I'll tell you when we get to it. When we did her demo, I got excited to sit at my machine again. So that's huge, absolutely huge. I see all of you. Hey, Barbara, Rondi, everybody. All right. So I got a bunch of you sent me chicken scratch things and I just loved it. But I have to tell you, honestly, it got lost in all this. And then somebody else sent me a BOM that they put in a show and the file was so big, I couldn't transfer it over here. And then of course I lost it. Perfect. In every way. It's why you don't have me doing brain surgery on you. Just saying. All right. So Peg just sent this. She just finished up this little Sue Spargo quilt. And you know how enamored I am with Sue Spargo. And she said this was totally a ton of fun. And I love those birds. Just love them. Okay. But um, we had a recent show and we did the potato chip, potato chip block. And it is super easy, super easy, super fun, super joyful. And this is what Peg did, and I believe this is going to a Nikki, a Nick U, a Nikki U unit or whatever. But she Google on the not Google, go to search on our front page and put in potato chip block. If you need a fast quilt for say um, a baby for charity or whatever, this is the block for you. And I got to tell you, I, this is, you know, primarily Tula's fabric, if not all Tula, I can't tell, but I love the little fox in the, in the, um, in the middle. Super cute. So Peg, thank you. I think you sent me these this morning or yesterday, which is why I haven't lost it. Okay. Then Kathy, oh, this makes me so happy. Kathy got a Berdina coupon from me and she went out and bought her Q20 or her Q16. I don't know. I don't remember. But she said, and I do have coupons. Remember, if you want to buy something, I just send it before and you get 100 bucks off straight from Bernina. And the request goes to A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at Gmail. Uh, and I need your, your snail mail address. This is nothing that's done digitally. But anyways, she said that she pretty much has nailed... Uh, uh, quilting ruler work. Okay. She's, I, it might've even been straight line. I'm not sure, but she said now she's working on free motion and she sent me some images and I snapped two of them for you to see. Um, yeah, I think she's nailing it. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I think you're doing something right, Kathy. And look at those beautiful, beautiful stitches. I'm telling you that the double stitch regulator is the bomb. 
And then here's her attempt at feathers. I think you're, I think you're a plus girl. Just keep lady, just keep going, keep going. You know, you can have beautiful machines that can like training wheels on a bike, but in the end, you got to put in the work to get it right. Although I will say with my Q20, the putting in the work was about 15 minutes and that was it. And I was so smitten. I couldn't stand it. Also, while we were gone, D has started on Saturdays an improv quilt. Easy. And so we put together, Kristen and Suzanne put together an easy improv kit that you could just use from scratch and you don't have to go digging through your stuff. Although, of course, you can. But um, she started it this last Saturday. This Saturday, she'll be off because it's Easter Sunday. So if you wanted this, you could get it and then catch up on time, you know, catch up because this Sunday, Saturday is going to be a buy. So um, we didn't really get it out there to let you know what's going on. All right. And as far as the gnome pattern goes, we're um, on the, we're, the pattern is what we're dealing with right now, but that should be here very, very soon. I can't stand that. I want to get going on that. Okay. So let's go to taping. In the olden days, we were always in front of a studio audience, right? Which means that you have to have a large facility that is meant for that. Then, then the studio that we loved in Denver closed. It, 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 they closed that door and decided to use it for something else because I guess not many people were using it like how we were. And of course, we're talking at thequiltshow.com and the tape shows. So we found another place in Texas and, well, that, wait, that place was in Colorado. So we found a place in Texas and it was a lovely studio and then COVID hit. So here we have this beautiful studio that could facilitate an audience, X, Y, Z. And then, uh, so there were three studios at this place in Texas. So we were in the largest and then we got booted to the middle all right, the middle one that wasn't itty bitty. Maybe we could get in some audience. We were thinking like about bistro tables and stuff like that. Um, but then we got put into the small studio and there's no way an audience could be in there. Well, as soon as you walk into a studio, you're paying a ton of money. So we couldn't, and we, we couldn't stay there. So what we decided was to pick a couple locations, um, preferably one in California and one in Denver, and I believe we found them. And the reason it was important that we're not here and there and all over is we have to now basically ship the set, the tools, all that good stuff to the location. So we found a place in Livermore. Um, the place we were at before is no longer available. They're trying to sell it, man. It was something else. But it also only slept, only had three bedrooms. Okay. So this is the front of, it's on, if you live in Livermore, it's on Caladera, Caladera Way. And this place is massive. It could sleep seven of us. Of course, we stayed at home. And then it nestled right into the vineyards. So yeah, there were once in a while planes flying over and this and that. But it was a very lovely environment that offered different set options. Okay. So I'm going to start just going through and telling you what I, my takeaways were. And I learned stuff this round. I mean, you know, you think you've been in this pool hall for 40 years, you know it all. <laughs> no. Okay. So Deborah Fell was our very first guest on Sunday morning. And she is an artist. She works very improv -y. She teaches at a Silomar. And, and her, her demo is basically stitching with no rules. And this kind of, she, Deborah's had um, a challenging childhood and she was the person, and we talk about that. She was the person that brought up that she, that she liked to work small because she could control it. And again, she wasn't the only one that brought it up. And um, there's a story about her little pink dress that I'm not going to tell you, but it was interesting as we went through these weeks of taping, this week, this week, seven days of taping, a lot of our artists recall back to fabric that was in their life. And she was in the courtroom, and I'm not going to tell you why, but she had her little pink dress. 
Okay. So she works with just scrabbles of scraps. That's all I'm going to say. And then she creates these little improv wonderful things in my book. She starts building on a background and talks about considerations. I guess that's probably like duck from a hardware store or, or drop cloth maybe, but you could use either. And she takes you through considerations as you put these little pieces together. So this, this I thought, I, and I wasn't the only one who thought this in the room, she had it all pinned onto a larger piece of, let's just say, duck or canvas, pinned onto. And I said, well, how are you going to attach these? And she said, with little gold pins. And my, I thought, okay, well, that's easy. What I didn't realize is this is her teaching sample that she takes around with her. And I don't think, I don't think Ricky realized it either. So we clarified that. But what's so neat is that you could do that with some little pieces that you have. And I believe she does teach at Asilomar. This, she loves little scrabbles of fabric. And this is a piece of hers on the beach of her walking that her husband snapped the picture. So she does do things with um, that you look at and you go, okay, that's a quilt, you know, full-size quilt. And then she does little things too. She was, she was a very interesting artist. And, you know, I guess I'm going to say that with everybody because everybody brought something to the table this round. And then in the afternoon on Sunday, we had Krista Watson. Now, Krista's been on before, all right? And she likes to call herself the cheerleader for domestic quilting. And here's her book. And I'm not promoting everybody's book here, but it helps me tell the story of what went on. Um, uh, how do I quilt it? Learn modern machine quilting. And what she did in the show was she showed different ways to approach simple machine quilting designs to the point of she even took two different or maybe even three different quilts of the same pattern and then showed how she quilted them and the difference it made. I thought it was really flipping awesome. And then on the same show, I didn't put in a slide on me, but I am really enamored with half square triangles as borders and all the really cool things you could do with that. And so I took a panel and I made half square triangles. And then we just talked about different ways you can arrange them for different results. Now, I don't know if this is going to happen, but Ricky and I got into a fight <laughs> on camera. And it wasn't a fight like, ah, I hate you. It was like, no, that's not how you do it. That's me, him. That's how you told me. I told you as I was going to do it. And I'm like, no. I mean, the camera kept rolling. And we were laughing. It was so ridiculous. And I'm hoping that that can be shared with someone behind the scenes, like for really, 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 really. Okay. Um, then we had... Kelly Beckwith. Kelly, uh, um, she came to my attention from a friend here, and her deal is to make blocks and then attach them via crochet. And she is, I think, from Maine or something on the East Coast, and she is hot, potato hot. And I thought, man, we have to get her on the show. You do not have to be a super duper um, crocheter to do this at all. I think about two or three basic stitches of which she um, teaches that like, uh, she think she's on Creative Spark or I, I don't know exactly where, but she teaches them. And look at this. I mean, it is just fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. And... Um, so I'm glad we found her because I could see taking a class with her. I'd have to um, get better with my crochet, learn to read stitches. But, okay, then we had Nancy Bavore on two shows on the same day. So let me just go through what she did on these two. And it was segments, okay? So on um, Kelly's, let me look here. On Kelly's, 
she did a thing on appraisals and it was really, really good. She's an AQS certified appraiser and she goes through everything that is considered when you're going to get a quilt appraised. And it's stuff that I guess I knew, but I think a lot of uh, layman people don't know. So I thought it was absolutely fascinating. Actually, she's from, um, I think she's retired from, but the San Jose Quilt and Textile Museum here. And I'm going to meet up with her next week there because number one, I have her shoes. <laughs> but number two, there's an exhibit with uh, Jonathan Shannon, who is no longer with us. And I'll bet a lot of you listening don't know the work of Jonathan Shannon. Uh, he was a game changer and they have uh, several of his quilts there. And I'm going to go there and get a, um, a piece for you guys to see. I think you'll really like it, you people. Uh, Nancy also did a thing before on poppy quilts uh, throughout the history, and they were just absolutely gorgeous and interesting. It was kind of like a bed turning. So that's what she did in the afternoon with Catherine Pellman's show. Catherine is from Southern California, and her show was about fashionistas. <laughs> Look how beautiful she is. Man, I wanted that scarf really badly. So she, her work is super playful. They tell stories and she showed us how to do um, a fashionista quilt. Let me see. Okay, this is, it's her, my birthday. And, and you just start looking at her stuff and they are so much fun. And so we built a little one. And then the secret is, how does she do, how does she build this? In what order? And if this wouldn't make, and she does full quilts out of this, let me say that. And this is a pretty big one too. But these would be wonderful gifts for your friends for their birthdays. And, and how she did it, I was lost until she sat, not completely lost, but lost until she sat at the sewing machine. I was like, that's how she did it. Got it. So, and then again, it was Nancy Bevore with the poppy quilts. Then the next day, we had a really interesting show about batiks, all right? Um, we had Carol, Car Carol Mullers on, who has been a staunch supporter of TQS forever and ever. She uh, designs for Island Batik. You, you can't miss her with her beautiful hair and her coloring. And she I think she also makes quilts for them too. But what was really cool was we talked about how the commercial fabric that we buy is made. And she brought some batiks with her and, and with great... Um, I could see the actual, the wax residue still on these commercial batiks. It was really interesting. Her stuff is um, fun. It's classic. It's, you know, if you're a traditionalist, you're going to go gagu over the quilt. But, but, the quilts, quilts. But what she did for us, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but she designed a quilt for us, and it was using these it's this isn't it this is just the little sample it is um using batiks and this little kitty quilt the kitty block and then she did a whole quilt out of it we're hoping we can work something out where it might be something that we want to make as a pattern on the site so i'm not showing you on purpose but what i thought was really cool about this she actually did it on ai she got the kitties on ai and you know, artificial intelligence. And that's a whole thing that you can say is wonderful, or you could say we're headed for whatever, but it's the first time I've heard about it, a quilter using it. And then all of a sudden when that unfolded, I found out other people were doing it too. So that was very interesting to me. But the second half of the show was with Jonathan and Beth Evans. They are batik artists in La Vida, of course, and Ricky went to their house, and I haven't seen the piece yet, and looked at their work and looked at how they did it. Now, over my shoulder, that is a batik uh, wax resist piece. 
wax resistant. I don't know if that's the same as Batik. I, I, I don't really know, but people have asked about my Noah's Ark and that's what it is. So let me show you one of their pieces. I think it's going to blow your mind. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. Then another person that was on the show, what is going on here? Get out of here, potential spam. Um, another person who is on the show, it's spam, John. I think. They'll leave a message if it's not. Anyways, um, I have known Cindy Weens for decades. She is very, oh, she is such a good quilter. She is such a good quilter. But she's also, um, she didn't want to be on the show at all. And she didn't have a chance when her husband, Mark, who I know and love, and I were like, you've got to do this. You've got to do this. You've got to do this. And um, what brought me to, here she is. Here she is. What brought her to my attention or reminded me that we have to get her, we have to get her, is this quilt. And maybe you've seen it on social media. And um, this actually was a combination of a classroom Tara and I'm not, it was a combination of different classes being put together. So that's when I said, man, we got to get Cindy on the show. One of her segments, if you look to the right, was working with um, your environment around you, looking at tile work, looking at things, and then how do you break it down? How do you do it? And then another segment, and, and sew it, right? And then another segment was on fabric. And what different solid fabrics, what kind are there? And what are the considerations? So, you know, when we're setting up, I'm thinking, well, how many considerations can there really be? Oh, let's just try a million considerations. And we went through them all. I thought it was fascinating. All right, what's this one? Oh, this is a great story. <laughs> She got her quilt in Quilt Con. Do you people know how hard that is to get a quilt in Quilt Con? Well, actually, the part, the, the circles are the front of the quilt, the triangles are the back of the quilt, and she decided she liked the back of the quilt better than the front of the quilt. So that's what she submitted and it got in for Pete's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. That made me laugh. Let's go to Leslie. Okay. Leslie Riley is a mixed media quilter and she, well, let me, let me, she invented this product. Um, maybe some of you are familiar with it. Transfer artist paper. Oh, wait, maybe I better take this picture off here. Okay. Transfer artist paper. Basically, with this, you can iron on anything and transfer a design as long as it can take heat. So in other words, you wouldn't iron it on your arm or your, your mat, your rotary cutting mat, but it can go on wood, it can go here, and it can go there. Um, but let me show you some of her work here. I was taken with this. And Shelly, our producer, said, oh, we've, we've talked about this before. Honestly, I don't remember. I don't know if we really have or if it didn't resonate or whatever, but boy, it resonated this round. And she asked, did I want her books and that paper? And the answer was straight up yes. Because she then, at the end of the show, and I'll show you some things, she did a little picture of me that I sent Shelly. And who knows what that was for? And and then we did some improv improv creating at the end, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I loved it. Okay, so uh what's this? Okay, so the first thing she did, and I know this may be like, ah, I don't can't stand it. Listen, if I can stand it, you can stand it. And it was how 
to get pictures of your on your phone and then go in there and edit it and then and then get it printed out so it could go on this photo transfer paper you don't have to have an iPhone it's just you can't have a flip phone right <laughs> um, but you can do so many things if you've got a camera and you have an editing mode and she just scratched the surface of it but let's take a look at oh there's a, a the transfer paper okay so that is how she got this woman's face this is a historical woman first name's elizabeth and now it's cutting off so of course i don't know it uh and it started with taking a picture getting in there fiddling with it and then you have this now i will tell you this all right she um also has a series on civil war women and so obviously this one worked for the Red, Red Cross or was a medic or something. I don't even know if Red Cross is around them. But here you have the, the, the woman and then you've got this beautiful, beautiful composed piece behind it. I, I love, I loved the, well, I don't love this, but the missing soldier that goes across the bottom. I love the hanky on it. Um, everything about it. So what you're doing is you are creating little wonderful pieces of art. All right. Then in the afternoon on Thursday, we did um, we did some master classes, which means Shelly's working her butt off because we go and take a subject matter, and then we pull what we think are the some of the things we want to put together in a compilation. And then she has to craft it and write it. And it's a big deal. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, my guess is it might even be harder than doing shows. But um, we did some of the ins and outs on that. So what I'm going to do now in looking at the time, um, I am going to say I'll do more on, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me do... Eh, look at the time. Eh. Okay, I'll do more on Thursday. And then on Friday, I'm going to give a bonus show in uh, white square and background is a head covering for nurses. Is that true, Susan? Wow. Wow. Okay, wow. So on Wednesday then, I thought I could get through all of these until I actually started composing it and putting this all together, and I realized I can't, okay? So tomorrow, Wednesday, I will finish this up, and then Friday, uh, R&K, uh, Quilter Select has a new ruler that's really awesome, cool, and there's a video on it, and I want to share it with you. Also, I feel like I've been so absent, I owe you guys three this week, even though it's against my religion to do Fridays now. <laughs> Also, I have started looking for a kitten, a cat, and then I turned the page on the book and I realized um, I'm going to Paducah, so so I can't get it now till May, all right? Let me see if there's anything else at the end. So we're going to start off with Patty Freed on the last, on Wednesday. And I'm telling you, the shows are sterling, so I believe they'll start airing this summer about in July. No, Rondi, I'm just doing this week. It's my Easter Bunny gift. <laughs> if that's okay with everybody, I'm going to do, you're on Thursdays, Wednesdays, and Friday. No, I'm on Mondays. I guess that probably came out of my mouth wrong. Thank you. Um, Mondays and Wednesdays. And then this year, I'm going to throw... this. This week, I'm still tired. I'm going to throw in Friday. But Mondays and Wednesdays. And as soon as Paducah is over, my schedule is awesomely clear. All right? So don't forget to order uh, D's. Um, oh, care. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Um, D is not going to be here this Saturday. So get that improv cat. Judy, my cat... Uh, Heidi got poisoned, and we don't know how, we don't know where, 
but her kidneys, I guess the counts are supposed to be something like 132, and it was at 32,000. And so when we found her, I took her to the vet on Friday, and when we found her on Saturday, she was dying in the fireplace. It wasn't on, but it was horrifying, horrifying. Um, I wanted to punch that cat in the face so many times, but she absolutely stole our heart. She's a kitten, right? So, and then Carol, yay, we're doing in Paducah on Thursday, right, Carol? I'm doing something with Bonnie Browning, and it is, um, I don't know what she's doing, but I'm an MC, all right? And there's a lot of gifts and a lot of fun and a lot of games. I will be in the Quilter Select booth Wednesday, Thursday, and half of Friday, as an FYI. Is my current cat okay? No, 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 no. Oh, it was horrible about the cat. It was hor horrible. And I even had to call Robin and say, this was before I knew how sick she was. I said, do you give me permission to put her down if I need to? And Robin was absolutely. And we didn't know till 10 at night. And I'm, I'm so glad I was in bed because I would have thought, do I take her in? Do I not? No, she was dying. She was dying. She was a little bright spot in our heart. John, what have I forgotten? We're yeah, we're cat shopping, but not till the end of, and I'm doing uh, shelter thing. I'm doing shelters. Your voice is behind on the video. Does that make sense? You know, I have no control over that. Yeah. Sorry, Carol. Anyways, okay. I am going to do some more handwork today. I was greatly inspired by what we've done. And on Wednesday, we'll pick it up. And again, it will be with Patty Free. Cheers. All right, people. Thank you for choosing to spend time with me.